Space Shuttle Atlantis blasted into orbit for a week-long mission. Start, four, three, two, one, zero, and liftoff, liftoff of the Space Shuttle, and it has cleared the tower. This is only the second nighttime launch in the shuttle program, and NASA says clear skies made for a light show visible from South Carolina to Cuba. Seven shuttle crewmen rode atop the 700-foot Tower of Flame, including the first Mexican astronaut. They'll spend the next week launching three satellites and testing construction techniques for future space stations. Also on the mission schedule, experiments using a small medicine factory and a search for hidden water in drought-stricken Africa. For only the second time, a shuttle was launched at night. A little less than four hours ago, the shuttle Atlantis roared into orbit with a crew of seven, including the first Mexican astronaut, and so far we're told that everything is going very well. Atlantis burst out of the darkness like an orange comet, only the second nighttime blast off in shuttle history. The six-man, one-woman crew will launch three satellites and lay the groundwork for building a permanent base in space. Jerry Ross and Sherwood Spring are erecting a 40-foot tower in the shuttle's open cargo bay, part of a prototype orbiting space station structure. They've both been out in space on Friday, beginning to work. Said Ross today, boy, I feel at home out here. I think I'm getting iron worker pay for this. Construction workers of the space shuttle Atlantis took new steps today toward building a colony in space. They tested construction techniques intended to prepare for a space station in the next decade. Dan Molina reports from the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Today, astronauts Woody Spring and Jerry Ross called on the talents of their colleague Mary Cleave to help them in their labors. Cleve was inside the shuttle operating the robot arm with a spacewalker perched on the end. Mary, doing a good job driving me around. Ready to go up, Mary. The addition of Cleve and the robot arm to the orbiting construction crew was yet another important test for the astronauts. As with Friday's spacewalk, these were tests to find out how difficult it's going to be to construct a space station. They're building, then tearing down two structures, one a series of bars in a pyramid shape, the other a 45-foot tall tower. Here's computer animation of a structure similar to the tower unfolding automatically. Question. How much construction of a space station needs to be done by more complex and costly automatic equipment, and how much can man do with his hands? That's the question that's being explored this evening. So far, it's all been easier than expected. How's that going to look, Brewster? Fantastic. That looks marvelous. As they move along, Ross and Spring are to lift the assembled structures by hand and move them around. Once all this is over, the crew will start packing things away in preparation for Tuesday's landing at Edwards Air Force Base. Dan Molina, NBC News at the Johnson Space Center, Houston. They built a prototype space station tower, 45 feet tall, and then used the robot arm to go out there and finish off the top of it. They're thinking about real space stations in the 1990s, said spaceman Jerry Ross. This looks beautiful from up here. In fact, it was a nice time to work outside. So shuttle astronauts Jerry Ross and Sherwood Spring recharged their spacesuits and did just that. Mike Von Frem reports. Most of the day was spent experimenting with Atlantis's 50-foot mechanical arm, which the astronauts used much like a cherry picker. Thanks for the ride, Mary. Can I have another ride later? NASA wants to see what it's like to do construction work in the weightless environment. What they learned from these experiments will be put to use when a space station is expected to be constructed in 1993. The astronauts snapped together a 45-foot aluminum tower complete with an American flag. They did hit one snag, a pin in the base of another structure stuck, setting the schedule back. The astronauts have found this pretty tough work. I think I'm getting iron worker pay for this, aren't I, Dave? Much of the problem has been the fact that they're working in these bulky spacesuits. But the $2 million suits protect them from the deadly lack of pressure as they travel at 17,500 miles per hour in temperatures that dip as low as minus 250 degrees Fahrenheit. NASA officials feel this experimental space construction work has been a big success, bringing them closer to the day when a space station will become a reality. But in the back of their minds is the worry of the budget. This year, Congress trimmed $25 million from the project, and there is concern that NASA could be a big loser in future battles for money. It will be the subtitle for the ending of NASA's 23rd Space Shuttle mission. Powered only by the wind, Atlantis swooped home from a 218-mile high orbit today, hitting the concrete runway at Edwards Air Force Base precisely on time. 
Main gear touchdown. Welcome home, Atlantis. Great landing. The perfect landing ended a perfect week in space for seven astronauts who practiced space construction techniques, performed medical experiments, and earned NASA $35 million by launching three satellites. Highly successful week-long mission. That cosmic crew landed at Air and Edwards Air Force Base in California at 4.33 our time this afternoon. Stored aboard the Atlantis were miles of videotapes to help design a U.S. space station and a purified hormone for test of a new medical treatment.